Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin today for Thursday, August 9th, 2012. I'm Darko, my website is ggnonline.com. On YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and my backup channel is ddarko2013. And all the headlines and links should be posted in YouTube's video description, so I encourage you to go check those out. All right, um, the f I got a lot of propaganda in this second video that I'm going to end up trying to cut through here. Uh, the first one, uh, first one we have up is U.S. Navy rescues 10 from Iranian ship on fire. A U.S. Navy destroyer has rescued 10 sailors from an Iranian flag vessel that was on fire in the Gulf of Oman. And it goes on. It doesn't really say what caused the fire. But it does say, uh, with its ships constantly deployed to the waters of the Middle East, it's not uncommon for U.S. Navy ships to rescue mariners in distress, whatever their nationality. And it goes on and says, the Navy's rescue of the 13 Iranian mariners in January made international headlines because it occurred shortly after an Iranian general had warned the U.S. Navy not to send an aircraft carrier back to the Persian Gulf. The destroyer had rescued the Iranian mariners from their fishing boat, which had been hijacked by Somali pirates for more than a month. And it's interesting because they don't add one more paragraph that would be vital to this story, right? Which is, uh, Iranian Navy helps U.S. ship attacked by pirates in the Middle East. This was actually in May 2012, almost June 2012, so not too long ago when the Iranian Navy helped a U.S. flag cargo ship that was attacked by pirates off the U United Arab Emirates, according to the vessel's owner. But the European Union's counter-piracy force said it had reviewed the incident and determined that there was no case of piracy, and it is a false alarm. So when they did help them, they really didn't help them, according to the mainstream propaganda. Uh, it says here, Temple Shooter's girlfriend praises heroes at the scene. So this is, of course, is the Sikh temple in Wisconsin, uh, the shooting that took place <clears throat> while I was away, and uh, t just told somebody in the comment board, I just shook my head and just thought, well, here we go again, right? Uh, because it just keeps getting more ridiculous, more ridiculous, um, really because of how obvious they are to people that are aware of these types of um, black operations that take place. By that, I mean it's usually some type of government entity or or whatnot that is going to benefit from this. So um, here we go again. This is what involving a white supremacist attacking, uh, thinking that he was attacking Muslims, which was pretty ridiculous because these people weren't Muslims, and that's why the family was so confused. It didn't make any sense. They don't know what his motivation was. But they did uh, tie it to domestic terrorism. Now, the, the point I would like to make uh, before I continue, because I'm not going to go all into this because it's been covered to death, and that's what I said. I just like to throw my point in there, which is, if you remember in the last two years, especially about two years ago, I, I was really ramming it home as far as the the um, domestic terrorism uh, agenda, as it's called, really. Um, the Muslims overseas, the brown people, and everything like that. Because of that 9-11, the United States has the Patriot Act, we have all these domestic terror laws, uh, all of our police have been militarized, terror, 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 it's everywhere, right? Uh, you know, but no, the, the point was to get everybody ready for the future terrorists, which were going to be militias, as the economy degraded, um, you're going to have, quote, white people, those are going to be the terrorists. And so this is a good way to link that home, bring it on home, you know, bring it home uh, between, uh, you know, brown Muslims overseas, which these people weren't even that, and white uh, supremacist domestic terrorists. A, a, a good uh, a good example of that was what was the Yemen-born uh, terrorist, or um, Al Qaeda spokesman, right? And he was what the first American that was killed by a drone. So they're always setting these precedences, and I just want to make that point. Okay, Temple Shooter's girlfriend praises heroes at the scene. So uh, basically, she went on and said that um, the that the authorities did a, a great job, basically, in responding. I find the good work that uh, they did for his people and his heroic last act as far more newsworthy than anything I could say. This is the individual who grabbed a butter knife and kept Paige away from his family and others before being fatally shot. So she had, she said that, right? Uh, Sikhs Temple shooter's ex-girlfriend arrested for unauthorized firearms. So, so yeah, she was a 31-year-old waitress nursing student with reported ties to white supremacist organizations. 
Just briefly, I'm just going to go through this, just some quick headlines, because I know most of you have already seen this, but just tying it together. The Sikh Temple shooter served in the U.S. Army Psychological Operations Unit. So, uh, yeah, before he went into the temple, it says here that, um, oh, we listened to heavy metal bands. A bald, heavily tattooed bassist, 40-year-old, oh, another Army veteran. So Army veterans, ooh, they're dangerous. He was trained in psychological warfare before he was demoted and discharged more than a decade ago. So he was a big loser, big loser. One man pulled off again, a lone gunman. So uh, I don't know about you, but I'm sick of, of being um, talked down to because this is just such crap. And it's unbelievable. But it doesn't really matter. And that's another point I'd like to make. It's, it doesn't really matter what reality is. It's As long as people are lied to and they're naive enough to believe those lies, then that is their reality. And all of us suffer because these people want to have their heads up their asses and call it reality and say, well, I can see everything, right? Well, my head's up my ass. I can see everything. And you're telling me that I can't? Well, screw you. So, you know, whether we're aware of this or not really doesn't matter. Uh, I guess we can just try to talk to our friends and family about it until they eventually get it. Um, it says one of the first cops on the scene told Mayor, uh, to prepare for a mass shooting weeks ago. So this video has been pulled in many different accounts. and cuts accounts shut down for carrying it. One of the first cops on the scene told Mayor to prepare for a mass shooting. So just like the Colorado shooting, again, just like the Colorado shooting, shooter at Sikh Temple wore tactical gear. So also, just like the Colorado shooting, and just like every other shooting, there were original reports of multiple shooters. Um, temple shooting, four shooters. This is what this guy says. Go in there. Links will be posted. YouTube's video description. He says four shooters. So, but, um, you know, gunman's tattoo led officials to deem Sikh shooting terrorism. So it's because he had a tattoo that they were able to uh, basically determine that it was an act of domestic terrorism. And so that's what you get right there because of all this. They're bringing it home uh, with your police militarized like this. Can they prevent shit? No, they cannot prevent shit. They can't prevent anything except for maybe the entrapment cases, uh, sting operations against these lone um, terrorist cells, basically the FBI uh, uh, foiling their own plots. So that's what they're good at. Um, and scaring the shit out of people with the media. Sikh temple shooters tattoo suggests domestic terrorism update. So ABC says they may have been a white supremacist. So tattoos on the body of the slain Sikh temple gunman and certain biographical details led the FBI to treat the attack as a Milwaukee era temple as an act of domestic terrorism. Which makes sense because remember they're from August... Was it August 5th, 2012? Uh, FBI asked local cops for tattoo databases. I covered this before. FBI wants your tattoos, more specifically, the meanings behind their inky black lines and colorful shapes, and asking law enforcement agencies for help. Talking about the FBI's Biometric Center of Excellence. Excellent. And a good way uh, sometimes to get rid of these lone shooters if they're not completely drugged up. Um, patsies is to kill themselves, i.e., quote, kill themselves, i.e., the police shoot them in the head. A Sikh temple gunman killed himself after being wounded by police. So, Next up, handgun type used by Sikhs is mass shooting weapon of choice. A semi-automatic handgun used in a deadly attack on the Wisconsin Sikh temple is the same type used in other recent U.S. mass shootings, including the one at the theater in Colorado, like the AR-15, which jammed and uh, didn't even work so and armored mi military vehicles are to patrol wisconsin neighborhoods so don't be alarmed if armored military vehicles are spotted on sheboygan county roads so this says military police company will be training with armored security vehicles on the roads in the area so it says these models have been used overseas in afghanistan and are used for patrol missions so Hopefully, uh, you'll feel more comfortable with those on the street, guys. Uh, kind of like what it was in Iowa or something like that, where they had the um, military police doing patrols on the streets. And yeah, the whole thing about the Tea Party, I remember warning people, I was like, you know, abandon that Tea Party movement because you're going to be considered a terrorist. Well, yeah, this full-spectrum operations in Homeland, a vision of the future of the U.S. Army's operating concept 2016-28 to was issued in 2010 with three goals how to portray how the future army will conduct operations as a part of a joint force to deter conflict and prevail in war, uh, home and abroad, especially at home. But uh, what they go in there to talk about is the scenario, the Great Recession, uh, that would last far longer than anyone anticipated. So, and talking about the middle and lower, uh, middle lower class getting screwed, 
and having ties to the Tea Party. That's right. Uh, extremist militias motivated by the goals of the Tea Party. And just like environmental activists that are um, uh, basically out there trying to bring awareness to the dangers of fracking, hydraulic fracking, they're considered and treated as insurgents. Now you have the Occupy movement being treated as terrorists as well. So you've all been set up for this, of course. And if you think you're going to revolt with with your uh, with your uh, guns and stuff like that, just know they have caseless ammunition now, and God only knows what they're going to give the special forces to so just start mowing people down. So it'll be a bloodbath if you want to go that route, or you can listen to other solutions like don't play the game anymore with religion and politics and statism anymore. But you know whatever, occupier charged with terroristic felony for protesting in front of a bank. And the NYPD unveils crime and terror fighting domain awareness system. A new way to track criminals and potential terrorists was unveiled Wednesday by Bloomberg. And it says here that um, these cameras, computers, databases uh, that are melded together and capable of nabbing the bad guys before they even know they're under suspicion. Of course, they're talking about what I talked about before. They're using predictive analysis, i.e. pre-crime, to prevent crimes before they happen. Another thing I've mentioned, too, is the um, high-altitude airship that was originally by Lockheed Martin coming out of uh, aviation capital Ohio and crashed. Uh, we have Army's giant spy blimp soars over Jersey Shore in first flight. So remember, it's a surveillance, not spying. So, so apparently this is from the aerospace giant Northrop Grumman. <laughs> it's so funny. It says here that it could deploy to Afghanistan for combat trials, kind of like the... Um, the heat pain ray gun, well, actually it's going to be used for civil unrest here in the United States, uh, which is the National Guard and Army is training for nationally. And let's not forget, we're leaving Afghanistan. Remember that, guys? We're leaving, so we've, we're already pulling out. NSA boss wants more control over the net. Not big surprise. The Internet should be adapted to allow for oversight by National Security Agency. So... I wouldn't give that too much credit there because I'm sure they're already doing it. But hey, for those people with their heads up their asses, you know, hey, this is coming from the NSA. They want to spy on you. So there, don't don't believe me. Big Pharma is shifting from deadly chemical drugs to bioelectrical implants. Not content simply drugging its millions of victims with mind-altering chemical and biological inputs, the pharma complex is now developing ways to literally transform the human brain into a drug industry-controlled biometric computer that will basically turn humans into nothing more than mind control robots. They're talking about new smart pills that tell patients when drugs are uh, basically to take their eugenics. A new intelligent pill, you got to be an idiot to take, will tell patients how to better follow doctor's orders and take the medication when they tell them to. This is similar, of course, to the FDA approving the ingestible sensor that tracks health from the inside. It can be swallowed in a pill to track the health data from inside the body. The idea is that the data can be used not only by patients themselves, but also the caregivers and eugenicists to individualize their care. It's talking about the drugs they're going to make you take. Again, this is not for me. This is coming from your leaders. Uh, Cameron from the UK uh, says here, we'll turn the NHS patients into real-time drug lab rats unless they remember to opt out. So he said the government is launching a consultation on changing the NHS constitution so that the default setting is for patients' data to be used for research unless the patient opts out. So in the speech, he said that uh, UK is going to be the world leader in real-time drug lab rats. So scientists predict eugenic society in five years. You're going to have genes that test to determine lovers compatibility he says they're heading in a new era of eugenics instead of choosing someone you love we may be choosing them based on compatibility of our genes and the leading scientist has warned they're already doing this with prenatal uh, screening to see whether your child is going to be the next superman or the next drug addict this study says chemotherapy can actually backfire and boost cancer growth we kind of already know this because we know mammograms cause breast cancer that's according to new research then you have Susan G. Komen for The Cure. You can donate to this. They're suggesting large differences in breast cancer survival among women who undergo screening uh, with mammograms and those who don't. So you actually, they're causing and promoting cancer. And, and Bald Barbie, the company is under pressure to mass produce dolls for cancer sufferers, which is a sad deal uh, because then you have people like this where they're normalizing it and making it trendy. Like plastic surgery for teens. Bullied 14-year-old girl gets plastic surgery to fix ears, nose, and chin. That's that's right, teens in plastic surgery, the trend continues along with Botox, a new trend for teenage girls. 
Another trend is tight genes I've been talking about. Scientists warn that tight, trendy genes cause testicular, testicular torsion or twisted balls, or basically kills your sperm. Under Obamacare, sterilization for girls won't cost a penny, while school's policy requires girls to take pregnancy tests. So while our leaders are trying to kill us, the Amish population is booming. Thank you.